Greetings, gun lawyer Derek DeBras here. I just thought I'd do something different. <laughs> Mix it up, me just sitting at the, looking at the camera and talking to you and Curtis here. Gets a little boring. Um, but anyways, I've said in a previous video and these are coming, wanted to let you guys know, we, we film a lot at one time. We've done about 15 videos today and today is, was it November 16th, Curtis? It is the 16th. All right, so we're right before Thanksgiving. I think the last time I filmed was right before St. Pat's Day. Uh, but we're gonna try to do a video every day. I'm gonna really, really try. I got a new webcam. And I'm going to try to answer more questions and I'm going to try to integrate the questions throughout the week so that Curtis and I can change it up and do more sophisticated and interesting uh, longer videos and hopefully that'll uh, give a lot of value to you guys watching the channel. Uh, today's question is in regards to Castle Doctrine. I think there's a lot of misinformation or just confusion on what Castle Doctrine actually is and we'll talk about that for a second. But here's the question. I thought in Ohio because of Castle Doctrine it was automatically assumed that you acted in self-defense and they, I'm guessing, I, I mean, I guess they mean the government, and they have to prove otherwise. So first off, when we refer to Castle Doctrine, all the Castle Doctrine is, at common law, historically speaking, is the removal of a duty to retreat from one's domicile. Okay, that's what Castle Doctrine is. Now, when we pass Castle Doctrine in Ohio, we passed a lot of other things, and a lot of states do that. We also passed a, a law that deals with the burden of proof and presumption of innocence. A bill for which is actually currently uh, making its way through the General Assembly now that would make it uh, even more difficult for the government to prosecute uh, self-defense crimes. Uh, but with regards to the changes that were made back in the mid-2000s, uh, what the law actually says under our version of CASA doctrine and the, sub the ancillary matters that were passed with it is that you are presumed innocent. Now remember in Ohio, if I want to argue and affirm my defense of self-defense deadly force, the burden to a preponderance of the evidence is on me, the accused, to prove to a preponderance of the evidence the three elements of self-defense. Uh, however, if it's in my residence, my car, or an immediate family member's car, and the person against whom I used deadly force uh, did not have privilege to be there, they weren't a lawful resident or user or owner of that property, uh, and they were entering that property unlawfully, uh, and I use deadly force, then it's presumed that I already meet that burden. Now that's rebuttable by the prosecution. The government can rebut it with evidence of their own, but it keeps the ball in their court out the gate instead of having it in our court. And I, I hope that clarifies things. So there is a presumption of self-defense. Again, if somebody's unlawfully in that property and they do not have privilege or any legal right to be there. Okay. Any other questions, drop them in the comments below. As always, be safe out there and carry on.